we're talking about the Nintendo effect. The fact that kids respond to feedback from video games because that feedback's immediate, accurate, and incremental. We're talking now about how teachers can use AI to provide immediate written feedback to students um, on their writing prompts. Sometimes it might take a teacher a long time to go through a number of writing prompts. That's delayed feedback for students. We think there's promise with AI giving immediate feedback, not replacing the teacher, but, but providing a, a tool that the teacher can use to provide immediate written feedback to students on their own writing. You're listening to the smartsocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This is our district talk segment where we interview district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday shine online. Now let's get back to the interview. Hi, I'm Ben Churchill, proud superintendent of Carlsbad Unified School District in Carlsbad, California. We're about 30 miles up the coast from San Diego, serving 11,000 students in 16 school sites. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Maureen Brummett, superintendent of Newington Public Schools. We are a suburb of Hartford, Connecticut, where there are seven schools and about 3,900 students. Hi, I'm Michelle Bourgeois. I serve as the Chief Technology Officer in St. Green Valley Schools. We are a school district here in Colorado, serving 33,000 students across 60 buildings and programs. We're located about 30 miles north of Denver in the beautiful Front Range area. How is your school district approaching AI tools like ChatGPT? My school district is trying to be really proactive about our approach to AI tools like ChatGPT. We initially said we cannot have a knee-jerk reaction to this. Let's put together an exploratory committee. So we've done that. My director of technology is working with teacher leaders at multiple school sites to, to think about the use of AI and chat GPT in our classrooms. One of our first questions that we've asked our exploratory team um, is not, should we allow chat GPT in our classrooms? Instead, the overarching guiding question that we're asking is, what uses of chat GPT should be allowed in schools and in classrooms? What uses of chat GPT should be encouraged in our schools and our classrooms? We're going at it from that positive question, and I'm really excited about some of the discussions that we're having. Well, I'm fortunate because in Newington, we've been a beta district for Google since 2015. So one of my, techno my technology director, I only have one, he is constantly staying ahead of the curve. And he and I chat frequently about things such as artificial intelligence and chat GBT. And what I've learned through my own research and his discussion is it's a very helpful tool. And it, it's kind of my opinion that if you're designing a lesson where all a child has to do is look up on an artificial intelligence site and get the answer, then it's not a very well-designed lesson. You want to have a lesson that is challenging and rigorous where a child can leverage resources like this, but not get an automatic answer. Or even if a student is able to get a math answer on an artificial intelligence site, they're going to be shown how that answer came to pass so they can learn that strategy or technique. But I think we have to just stay ahead of the curve. And I think our, Google's probably going to come to the head of the pack again on this. Their BARD is their artificial intelligence hub that's going to be released and vetted soon. And I think that's going to be a super powerful resource. But I do rely on people far more tech savvy than myself to give me that information. We've also been involved with an expert from the University of Georgia. Her name is Kat Flippin. She's kind of on the cutting edge of this work. And my technology director, Jay Salerno, has worked with her and attended workshops. And I think just, you know, learning about the power of it. From something as simple as developing a rubric, developing a lesson plan for a teacher, and then for a student, creating a rigorous assignment where they can leverage uh, artificial intelligence, but it can't spew out all the answers for them. And that may be some professional development that teachers will need as they get deeper in this work. You know, um, when chat GPT and, and AI really exploded back in November, December of this school year, we had a choice to make. And what I appreciate about our superintendent and our leadership is that rather than believing that one, it wasn't going to affect us or two, that we could protect our students from it. Uh, we instead decided that this was our opportunity to lean in as leaders and start learning about it. So we began last year 
um, with exploration, just starting to think about what the implications of these tools are. And did a deep dive. We invited in some guest speakers. We even gave our, our principals homework and asked them to spend some time using tools like ChatGPT. This year, we're embedding uh, some professional development for our, for our teachers. So we have an ongoing long-term professional development opportunity that almost 400 teachers are engaged in called Exploration AI. And so it is an opportunity for teachers to come together. Uh, we do pop-ups once a month where we explore tools with them. Uh, they have challenges. Uh, we have a little bingo board where they can complete different assignments and, and uh, gain professional development credit. But for us, this year is really a year of exploration because we want to be ready for what our students need to know about using these tools. We have to understand them deeply. Uh, and so I'm appreciative that our superintendent and our entire district is just leaning into using this as an opportunity to learn and grow. Are there any positive use cases that you've heard of from either students or teachers around ChatGPT? I'm starting to hear of some positive use cases related to ChatGPT. I've heard of some of our special education teachers writing goals and activities into the IEPs, individualized education plans for their students, using AI to help uh, generate ideas for, for, those, for those plans. A number of our teachers and staff are using AI to translate announcements into multiple languages uh, to make that quick and easy. Instead of going down the hall and finding the, the uh, district translator, they're able to quickly and easily do translations on the spot. Uh, at the district level, we're uh, using ChatGPT to synthesize hundreds of pages of written feedback from parents and students and staff as we do our, our annual surveys to do goal setting for the district. We found that AI can quickly analyze and synthesize and kick out some major themes from hundreds of pages of written feedback. The other thing that I'm really excited about, um, 15 years ago, uh, Douglas Reeves, Jeff Howard were, were talking about the Nintendo effect. The fact that kids respond to feedback from video games because that feedback's immediate, accurate, and incremental. We're talking now about how teachers can use AI to provide immediate written feedback to students um, on their writing prompts. Sometimes it might take uh, a teacher a long time to go through a number of uh, writing prompts. That's delayed feedback for students. We think there's promise with AI giving immediate feedback, not replacing the teacher, but providing a, a tool that the teacher can use to provide immediate written feedback to students on their own writing. I teach at the college level and a colleague of mine recently created a rubric for a course that she takes. But I have had teachers in my district who are already leveraging that as a lesson planning tool, an assessment tool. I think it's still in the early stages, and I don't think everyone is super familiar with it. I also think as we look at our courses, especially at the high school level, this has the power to do more coding than what we're used to, and it might leverage be leveraged that way. But when I talk to employers, they say coding is going to be and continues to be the way you need to go to have a good chance at a job opportunity in the real world these days. So I think it's our responsibility as educators to really become familiar with a lot of this, but also does it mean we have to start tweaking our curriculum because some of the things we're teaching now, such as computer programming or coding, may have a much different approach than what we're used to. It's not always easy, but we've got to really become familiar or stay ahead of where this is headed, because our kids sure are. They, they are. they often show us stuff. You know, one of the use cases that has come out of our Exploration AI professional development that we're offering to teachers this year was one that, that I hadn't really thought about. So we all, as, as educators, had to go through the evaluation phase where someone comes in and they watch your teaching and you have to reflect on the feedback you give. And what this teacher did was she used an AI tool to actually give her feedback on the video that she uploaded. So she uploaded a video of herself teaching and that AI tool gave her feedback on her instructional practice. And she said, you know, I've always been so hard on myself, but having an outside perspective and having kind of a neutral voice give me feedback on my instruction made a difference in how I think about myself as a teacher. And so thinking about how teachers make their, their world easier by using these tools to, to create and, and sometimes streamline some of the, the tedious work that they do, but also to grow as educators, I think is a really powerful way that I'm excited to see grow even more. 
With regards to AI tools like ChatGPT, are you changing any of your techniques for grading students or maybe even the types of assignments being used in the classroom? When we're talking about ChatGPT, what we're really doing is asking questions about fundamentally rethinking the way that we prepare students for, for a future and a future society that embraces AI. So we're trying to think about how can this be used positively as a tool. I don't have any great examples of how we're changing our grading techniques, but I would, I would offer up this metaphor. Building a house, for example, is a great activity. If you were to do that only using a screwdriver, you'd be exhausted and it would take forever, right? Using a power drill, a different type of tool, to replace a screwdriver would absolutely help to increase your efficiency uh, and likely your accuracy in putting that house, house together. Likewise, the use of AI, the use of ChatGPT, has to be thought about as a new tool, one that can absolutely improve the way that we talk about and do teaching and learning in schools. We're just going to have to be really thoughtful about the impact on teachers and students so that we can do good work for everybody. We're heading in that direction. One thing that we are doing is called standards-based grading, which is, I think, fairly common now throughout the country. But it really causes the student to have to demonstrate proficiency not just I got an A or a B, but I can show you and demonstrate that I understand this standard in the curriculum. So I'm hoping that is a good compatible approach to grading that will align itself up with how kids are going to be doing assignments now with access to artificial intelligent platforms. But I, I think we're still learning how to do that. I think we're fairly early on in this process, but I suspect some of my teachers will kind of go on the on the front of this and be kind of role models for other teachers and how to leverage this to its capacity. And again, teachers are, they have a hard job. Why not get pr proficient at something that could make your job a little easier? Maybe you won't have to spend as much time planning the lesson and you can spend more time executing something that's very engaging. When I think about our grading policies, we've always really focused on um, kind of an experiential and design thinking model. So giving kids the opportunity to show what they know and, and many and diverse, and, uh, diverse and, and varied ways. So for us, grading in the age of AI is, is not significantly different, but we're also recognizing that the, the elephant's in the room and we can't pretend uh, that AI is not here. So what I've appreciated most about our teacher's approach is they have that conversation with their students. They link it to academic integrity. They also link it to helping students understand where AI can be a, a benefit to them as an instructor and as a, a student. So for me, really thinking about how AI has shifted the classroom, it's really not about penalizing students for using a tool. It's about helping them understand where that tool fits into their education and how they can use it in a way that actually helps them grow as learners. Thanks for listening to our smartsocial.com podcast. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. This was our district talk segment where we interview school district leaders to learn how they're keeping students safe on social media so those students can someday launch into their future by shining online. This episode was brought to you by our smartsocial.com VIP program. It's called the Very Informed Parent Program, which helps you engage your students with teen-led video lessons. Stay one step ahead with our premium parent newsletter and discover hidden features on trending apps on teens' phones and our 54-plus live parent and student-friendly events every single year. You can click on the link below to chat with one of our team members if you want a free pass to our VIP program to support your community with our smartsocial.com resources. And if you're a district leader who has a success story, we would love to feature you on a future episode. You can click the links below to reach out. Thanks so much for listening, and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Have a great day.